Good morning and happy Sabbath. Yes, it is a beautiful day. Amen. The Lord is blessing us. Amen. Hallelujah. It is what we call in the Christian world, this is Holy Weekend. And I don't know about you, but I am telling you, this is the best weekend. Like, if you never normally shout at church, if you never more really want to talk, this is the weekend you should be shouting. Because we are here because this weekend happened. Amen? Amen, amen, amen. Welcome to Mount Rubido Seventh-day Adventist Church. We are a church that seeks to first love God, connect with our one another, and love on our community, which is love, grow, and serve. My name is Nisli Guerrier. I am an assistant pastor, associate pastor here at this church, and I am happy to be the person gets to greet you this morning. I was glad. I was glad. Woo, I shouted when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Because I know in the house of the Lord there is peace. In the house of the Lord there is grace. In the house of the Lord there is joy. In the house of the Lord there is healing. In the house of the Lord there is a blessing. I know God is in the building. I know you brought him with you. You didn't wait until you got here to find him. You already had him at home. You had him in the car. You had him with you on the freeway, and he is with you in this space right now. Amen? Let's put our hands together for this great God that got us here this morning. Yes, 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 yes. And to start off this morning, I'm going to ask everyone to stand on the feet that the good Lord gave you. I know you might be a little tired, but the feet still work, right, Sister Regina? Yes, it does. Yes, yes. My feet still work for now. Um, online, our online ministry. Thank you so much for being with us, everyone. I know there are so many places you could have been today, including Sink Mattress. But you left your house and you came into this place because you recognize there is something about coming together to worship and to bless God. What you can do here, you cannot do by yourself watching on a screen. Amen. Now, if that's all you got, that's all you got. But if the good Lord bless you to be able to come into the house, come into the house. And for those of you that are on your way, it's not too late. Come into the house. Yes, yes, yes. Father God, let us pray. In the name of Jesus, we come before you this morning. Oh, with praise and thanksgiving on our lips for God, because you did not have to. You didn't have to wake us up. You didn't have to do anything. You didn't have to die. But Lord, if you don't do another thing, you have done enough. 
If you don't answer another prayer, you have done enough. If you don't heal another person, you have done enough because we didn't even deserve what you've already done. But God, you're so good. You keep doing. You keep giving. You keep blessing. You keep honoring. You keep carrying. You keep healing. Oh, God, we thank you. God, there are so many people in here that might be dealing with something, whether it's an emotional situation, whether it's pain of the loss of a loved one, whether it's not having enough, whether it's just their faith being tested, whether it's what their belief is a little shaky, whether it's because they're just not sure you really are who you say you are. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray that today you will reveal yourself anew. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray today that everyone who are the watchers or is in here will walk away with a different understanding of who you are. And at the end of the day, people will run to the altar. Let them ask us, what must we do to accept this big sacrifice that you've done for us? So God, we love you. God, we thank you. God, we praise you in the matchless name of Jesus. Let everybody who believes in God put your hands together and thank him for the gift. Amen. In my life, and since I have accepted him, my life has been successful, and I'm looking forward to what comes next. But definitely, it is the most successful thing I've ever done. After uh, 18 years old, I had a drug addiction. For five years, I was addicted to crack. Um, ended up in prison, and my mom died. And so while I was incarcerated, I had an encounter with Jesus that changed my life for the rest of my life. He gave me a question. He says, what would you do if you can give your mom an ROI? And I decided that I was going to take him up on that. And so for the last 25 years, I've been able to transform my life with Jesus. One decision after another, um, obedience has become my mantra. And um, my life is forever changed. Amen. Happy Sabbath, family. Happy Sabbath, family. It's a great day to be in the house of God one more time. Isn't God good? He woke you up this morning. He put you in your right mind. Hallelujah. Come on and give God some praise. Come on and give God some praise because he is worthy. Come on and stand to your feet and give God some praise. A hallelujah praise. A hallelujah praise. A hallelujah praise. I love you, Lord, praise. I love you, Lord, praise. Your worthy God, praise. Your holy God, praise. I adore you, God, praise. Your everything to me, God, praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. You are amazing, God. Hallelujah. You are of Judah. Hallelujah. 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 
Come on, everybody. We're going to give God some praise today. Come on and put your hands together.
we give him the praise today. It's going to shift the atmosphere. The word says that every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that he is the Lord. And we've come to worship him on today because he's worthy. Yes, the world will bow down and say, says yes yes the world will bow down bow down and say you are God says every man every man they have to bow down bow down and say you are King. so we're not gonna wait we're gonna start right now so so let's start together says we will sing how Sing. 
period. More is exciting. The next is exciting. Even if you don't know what next could be, the fact that there is next, that's exciting. So for me, Jesus means more. I am a survivor of stage four cancer, and I don't even have a cancer that makes sense for my age or my gender or even my ethnicity. <laughs> I have something that no one can explain, that no one could find until it was stage four, and that no one said could be fixed, and it is. And that is just one of the many things, but a closer testimony that I have is two days ago, I could not walk. I had an emergent MRI and they found an eight millimeter shift in, in my back, in one of my discs still have it. And I told Jesus, I said, if you will make it so I can stand and move, I will commit to every promise that I made. And I'm here at practice and I'll be here tomorrow and I'm gonna dance on the 30th and I'm gonna leave it all on the stage because I made that promise and I meant it. And if I can't walk after that, I'm okay with it because I told the devil no and I told Jesus yes. So that's what he's done for me.
How many are grateful for the sacrifice that God made for you? Come on, if you're glad about it this morning, come on, just open up your mouth and praise him. While you're clapping your hands, come on, just open up your mouth and tell him thank you. Nobody else could have done it for me but you. I'm grateful for your sacrifice. Thank you for shedding your blood that washes my sins away. What he did on the cross was marvelous. What he did at Calvary yes, yes. was a marvelous thing. I will sing your praise for you've done such a marvelous thing for someone so wretched yet my soul you have redeemed No one else could do it. No one cared half as much. Yet you thought my soul was worth it. So you gave your only son. Oh, you gave, you gave that I might live. You gave, you gave that.
It's so marvelous. Marvelous. Oh, yes, it is. So marvelous. It's marvelous. It's, it's marvelous. marvelous. Oh, oh, oh. Marvelous. It was a marvelous thing. Marvelous. When you made me whole. Marvelous. It's marvelous. So marvelous. How you hung on the cross. It's marvelous. Just to save my sins. Marvelous. How can I say thank you? Marvelous. It's marvelous. Jesus. Ah, my, 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 my. Come on, let's put our hands together. Is, is God not doing a marvelous thing? God is good all the time. God is what? Amen, amen. We praise God today. It's time for our offering, but man, I just... So I, I gave y'all a little glimpse last week. I gave y'all a little glimpse. I told y'all about the 30,000 last week that the Lord granted to the church for children's ministry. Come on, somebody say amen. He's done a marvelous thing. And I, I didn't want to let the cat out the bag too soon, but man, we're just praising God for this LED screen. Can we just praise God for becoming more polished? And um, I, want, I want to give God glory, because I told y'all we were on the edge. That's why we went into that prayer period of prayer and fasting, y'all, because God is doing some amazing things for our church. And at the same time, there's opposition. But how many know that greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world? And that's why we got to push forward in prayer. So I got to share the testimony real quick. Man, I, I, how many know that Alan Woodson is a bulldog? How many know that? <laughs> Yo, I'm talking about aggressive for the kingdom. Amen. So Alan came to me, and you know, we, we had this whole vision about trying to improve our media, and we had phase one where we were doing infrastructure and all the different things that we're trying to do here. We're going to have a drum cage soon. Amen. That's going to help the, the sound control. Amen, somebody. All right. I know, I, I know, I knew there was going to be some amens in the building. And so Alan came to me and said, hey, Pastor, um, you know, we really need a screen. Um, that screen is curling up. The projector is trash. And he was just like, is there any way, is there anything that can be done? I said, well, Alan, we need to at least accomplish phase one. And so then he said, okay, Pastor, what if I can raise the money? Now, I'll start, I'll run and shout all by myself. So this brother came back to me in like a week and a half with the money. Can we? Yeah. Can we just give God a praise? Come on now. Hey, won't he do it? Is he not an all-time God? Man, I'll give God going. Yo, does that LED tree look good, y'all? Come on, man. That. Oh, Lord. Thank you. So, y'all, we're actually ahead. Somebody say ahead. 
we're ahead of where we were supposed to be. This wasn't even supposed to be in phase one, but God did it, and we give him the glory, the honor, and praise. And so I want to just praise God for Alan. I want to praise God for all of our donors. I want to praise God for our media team. Chris Watkins is the man. Yo, can, yo, when you see Chris, Chris has been up in here with the team, Ravita, and with Chris and all the other, like they've been doing work, y'all, and just, just trying to get us prepared. And there's more that's still ahead. We be, we're believing God for greater. We're believing God for becoming. And so I didn't mean to take all this time, but I had to give God glory. I'm, y'all, I'm so excited. I'm so pumped. And so, look, we're believing God for becoming in every area. We're believing him for becoming a family again. We're believing him for becoming missional again. We're believing him in every area. And so we just want to give God glory, honor, and praise. All right, so I want to just real quick uh, have prayer. I know the deacons are waiting. And then we have uh, just some birthday shout-outs that we want to give. And then we're going to continue just giving God glory on Resurrection Weekend. Anybody thankful for the blood? Thankful for Jesus. We honor him today. And we want to do more than just honor him with our lips. We want to honor him with our lives. So we're going to pray and um, invite the deacons to come forward. And I just, I just want to say this. Although we got all these blessings, amen, we still need you to give. Amen. All right. All right. Thank you, Lord. But we still need you to give. Amen. So let's pray. Father, we just want to say thank you. You're, you're great and greatly to be praised. We are truly in awe of you. And God, we're just believing as we're just looking that we're on the verge, that we're really at the edge of something. And so, God, we just pray that we'll warn the spirit, that, Lord, we'll stay focused, that we will cast down strongholds, that we will break through in areas. And, God, we just know that the best is yet to come. So be with the gifts that are given today. We thank you, God, for those that are sacrificing for your cause. We want to take Riverside. We want to take the Inland Empire for the kingdom. And so we just make ourselves available to you. All these things we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Just real quick, as the deacons are collecting offering, I do want to uh, give a quick birthday shout out to my brother, Derek Rose. I see Derek Rose in the house. There, just wave your hand for us. Amen. Amen. So we just want to give you a little birthday. And since we got, like, praise team right here, oh, oh it's your birthday? Oh, come on now. Oh, we're in the praise. Yes. So this is what we're going to do. Since we got the praise team right here, can we just sing a quick happy birthday to everybody? Can we just do that? Okay. On three. One, two, three. Happy birthday. Amen. Amen. Last announcement here is next week we're starting a new sermon series called Faith Unfiltered. And this is a, a, this is a series that we are just encouraging you to invite family, friends, individuals that have questions. We're trying to get real about Christianity and faith. And so that's going to be starting for the month of April. We want to just encourage you to invite, just invest and invite whoever you can to be a part of that series as we get real uh, talking about faith. So thank you so much. We are going to continue to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. And we're going to give God a great praise. God bless you. Uh, the only means of salvation. Uh, he's a father. Uh, when our earthly fathers fail us, he's life. You know? That's what he means to me. And I feel like God has given me a second chance at life, a second chance at love, a second chance at having a family. And um, we just feel so blessed. And I have a profound like peace in my heart that I had never had before. When it comes to churches, 
Um, we've been to a few and we've never felt more accepted and loved and, <laughs> and just more at home than we do here. We love our church um, and it's just a really uh, great place to be. his resurrection he's resurrected us he's resurrected he rose he died on the cross and then rose on that third day can we just praise God for that that he sent his only son to save us he who knew no sin became sin for us thank you God
Can we all sing your name? Sing it. Your name.
lift it up. All praise, yes. We'll rise to Christ. Yeah. of God. Yes. All will come and worship him because he is the Lamb of God slain for our sins. And we give him glory today. We thank you for the sacrifice. Born of a virgin, 
born of a virgin. Promise. Promise fulfilled in Jesus. Suffer and serve. Suffer and serve. Oh, the blood. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Resurrection and life. Resurrection and life. Death has died. Death has died. In Come Jesus. on, you know death has died in Jesus. Word of the Father. talking we're talking about revelation and he pointed out that God Jesus is both the lamb and the lion how can that be and he pointed out that Jesus has all power right like the lion powerful king of the jungle right powerful king all power is in his hands and he is victorious and that power that has that's the lion of judah but it's through the methods of the lamb that power and that victory is not just the brute strength it's through the methods of the meek and the humble and the sacrificial lamb without that sacrifice it doesn't mean anything and that sacrifice was not just because he needed it it's because we needed it. He's the lion and the lamb. He's the sacrificial lamb and the victorious lion. I need somebody to know that Jesus is both in our situation as the sacrificial lamb and he gives us power like the lion of Judah. He's the powerful God. He reigns on high. He's the God of creation and he's also the
Declare that he's the Lamb of God. There is no Think about it. There's nobody else that can do what Christ did for you. There's no one else that can love you and know your situation like God. He's right there with you and he knows what you're going through. But he also knows that he has victory and power in his hands. Come on, come on, Pastor Neasley. Come on, lead us in the praise over here from the front row. Come on, y'all. God, oh, come on, we can do better than that. If it had not been for the Lord on our side. Yo, can we just stand to our feet and give God a praise? Come on, church family. We do it for the president. We do it for a dignitary. Can we stand to our feet and praise the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the Savior of our souls, the lifter of our heads. We give him glory, we give him honor, and we give him the praise. Amen, amen. Yeah, if there's any weekend, <laughs> We ought to be lifting up the name of God in a crazy way. It's Resurrection Weekend. We want to praise God. Last night we celebrated a God Bay feast. It was amazing. I want to thank D. Woodson and our setup team, Visions. Uh, yo, can we just put our hands together just for the ministry of these volunteers that sacrificed their time to create an atmosphere where we can celebrate and worship. And we just praise God. Thank you so much, D, for all of your hard work, you and your team. Man, we, uh, we are just thankful today to, to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Man, we can almost go home just, we go going right now, man. Uh, but there is a word from the Lord. And I want to invite you just as we get ready just to uh, get in, open up his word, get in. I want to thank Mary Ann as well over here expressing worship in art. Man, that, that painting is really coming together, and uh, we, we give God glory. Also, just for those of you that may have missed last night's Agape Feast slash Communion, we want you to know that there are emblems here for you. So if you want to still participate in Communion, please see one of our deacons. They're going to, they will assist you, that you so that you can get one of those emblems and that you'll be able to participate in the Lord's Supper if you missed it on last night. I want to invite you at this time again. I know I just asked you to stand, but I am going to ask you to stand again for the reading of God's Word. Uh, we're going to be looking at the book of Mark. What book did I say, everybody? Mark, the 16th chapter, and I'm reading verses 9 through 14. Mark, the 16th chapter, and we're reading verses 9 through 14. I'm reading in the English Standard Version of the Bible. Here is what God's Word declares. Now, when he rose early on the first day of the week... He appeared to Mary Magdalene, for whom he had cast out seven demons. She went and told those who had been with him as they mourned and wept. But when they heard that he was alive and had been seen by her, they would not believe it. 
After these things, he appeared to another in another form to two of them as they were walking into the country. And they went back and told the rest, but they did not believe them. Afterward, he appeared to the eleven themselves as they were reclining at the table, and he rebuked them for their unbelief and hardness of heart, because they did not, they had not believed those who saw him after he had risen. Saints, with your prayers and God's help, I want to preach under the subject today, he's still showing up. He's still showing up. Let's pray together. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, we come before you. We, again, just thank you for just who you are, God. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you the praise. And now, God, I just pray that just you would take the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart, that they'd be acceptable in your sight. My Lord, my strength, and my Redeemer, in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. He's still showing up. He's still showing up. On December the 7th, 1854, Lewis Pasteur was invited to the grand opening of the science department in Lilly University. While he was there at this keynote celebration, as they were dedicating this building, this new science building, in his speech, he acknowledged an individual, a Danish physicist who had done some amazing work and had stumbled accidentally on understanding the basic principles of electromagnetism. It was labeled an accidental discovery. He was, he was doing something else and he just stumbled upon it. And because scientists believe that it is at a point where all conscious and intentional experiments fail, that the risk of making a new discovery is actually amplified. And after Orsted had failed in a series of experiments, he made this accidental, again, discovery of the basic principles of electromagnetism. And from this experience, Louis Pasteur, in his keynote address at Lilly University, talking to students, faculty, as they're getting ready to open up this new science building, he, in that moment, coined a phrase that followed him for the rest of his life. And what he coined in that speech was this, talking about Orsted and his accidental discovery of electromagnetism. He describes Orsted's situation as a different situation, and he said these words, because chance favors the prepared mind. Now, while that statement became famous, that statement that favor is on the side of the prepared mind, I need you to understand today that that statement is partially true, but it's not universally true. It applies to smart folk that are doing, uh, making academic strides, that favor is on the side of the prepared mind that those who are prepared are the ones that are going to have a greater chance. But that statement is not completely true. It's only partially true, not universally true. You see, yes, chance favors the prepared mind, but I know that there's some individuals in the building and online that can testify that that's not your testimony. Because your testimony is favor gives the prepared, unprepared mind a chance. Is there anybody that can testify today in the building and online that there was some stuff in your life that was not supposed to happen? That there's some chance by chance that favors uh, the the, the prepared mind. It doesn't negate the fact that favor gives the unprepared mind a chance. That there's a big idea. This is the big idea for our message today. And that is, when we look at the life of Mary Magdalene, when we look at the life of these two individuals that were walking down the road of Emmaus, that we look at the disciples, we see the obvious demonstration of the favor of God. And what I'm basically trying to get at today, if, if, if you want to just pull away what I'm talking about in this message for Resurrection Weekend, it's this. The favor of God is on the side of the ineligible. 
Is there anybody that knows that some of us are working a job right now that we're not eligible for? That you're living in a house that you should not be living in? But you were eligible because of the favor of God. You didn't have the credit. You didn't have the money. But the favor of God is on the side of the ineligible. And if we're going to boil down what today's message is all about, it's that. That the favor of God gives the ineligible and the unprepared mind a chance. It's been three days since our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ was crucified on Golgotha's hill. The disciples are bewildered and they are broken. The one whose hands had healed the sick, who had opened the eyes of the blind, were now nailed to a cross. It is three days of a confusion. It is three days of wrenching gut pain. And on Sabbath, after Friday being crucified, the Bible says that he rests in the tomb on that Sabbath day. And, 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 and so after he rests on the tomb on that Sabbath day, is anybody thankful that on Sunday he got up with all power and authority in his hands? And so in our passage of consideration today, we see Jesus favoring some ineligible individuals while he comes off the grave. The Bible says that repeatedly that he appeared. Somebody say appeared. He appeared. He appeared to Mary Mag Mag Magdalene. He appeared to the two men that were traveling down the roads of Emmaus. He appeared to the 11 disciples. And here we get a chance to understand some crucial, uh, crucial lessons in our lives about how the favor of God gives the ineligible favor. And here's the first one. The favor of God gives the ineligible and the unprepared a chance. And as we look at the life of Mary, we see this. The favor favor of his presence is not impacted by my defeats. Here's what it says in verse 9. The Bible says this. It says that now when he rose early on the first day of the week, he appeared to Mary Magdalene for whom he had cast out seven demons. Now, what some scholars surmise about Mary Magdalene is that sometimes when we look at her being, these demons being cast out, that we think that he cast it out all at one time. But some scholars believe that this was seven different occasions where Mary had demons cast out of her. In other words, she was struggling with some reoccurring issues. She had experienced defeat over and over again in her life. She had experienced multiple L's. And is there anybody that can be honest about the fact that you deal with some reoccurring issues? Now, I know that we're in the church, and church folk only talk about issues that they got the victory over. But are there any honest folk in the building today that can honestly just tell the people that I got the victory over some stuff, but there's some stuff I'm dealing with right now. Some stuff that keeps on coming back up, that Jesus has to cast some stuff out over and over and over again. Can I confess today, y'all? Can I just confess? Yo, I, I just, I want to be a good husband and I want to be a good father. I desperately want to do it. When I first came here to Mount Rubidoux on my installation Sabbath, I made some covenants before this church that I was going to be a present father. I don't know if y'all remember that. I said, I'm going to be a present father, and I'm going to be a present husband. Amen. 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 The spirit was willing, but the flesh, it was weak. Because the challenge for me, y'all, is that sometimes I have a, a reoccurring issue of being addicted to my phone. Where I'm on my phone and my wife is talking to me. Where I'm on my phone and my kids are trying to have a conversation. Where I'm constantly drawn, I can't put it down. I'm constantly trying to escape. I'm challenged with some reoccurring issues that negatively not only impact my wife, but also impact negatively my kids. 
And the reality is that our, th- th- these things, these reoccurring issues, these reoccurring challenges that we have, we all face them. You promised last year that you were going to stop looking at porn. You promised that you were going to start working out every day. You promised that you were going to stop yelling at your spouse and your kids. You promised that you were going to stop procrastinating on your homework. You promised that you were going to stop cutting yourself. We, all of us deal with reoccurring issues, but I'm so thankful that the, that the example of Jesus is that the favor of his presence isn't impacted by my defeats. It didn't matter that she had seven demons that got cast out and she had a reoccurring issue. Jesus still showed up in her life and was present after his resurrection. Are we just thankful today that we serve a God that in spite of my reoccurring issues, that he still favors me with his presence? But what we also learn from Mary's story is that the favor of his presence is not dictated by protocol. See, Bible says this about Mary. It says that Jesus went to see her first. He didn't go to his disciples first. He didn't go to the guys on the road to Emmaus first. He saw Mary Magdalene first which tells me that we serve a God that sometimes grants us blessings that are out of order. Okay, so here's, here's, here's the background. Mary Magdalene, she's a woman. She's living in a time period where women are looked down upon. They're second-class citizens, maybe not even second-class citizens. Maybe they're third-class citizens or fourth-class citizens. They were not respected. In fact, the word of a woman in the court of law was not, it had no weight. It had no value. But the Bible says that instead of him going Jesus, going to a man first, He steps out of protocol, and he goes and he gives the good news to a woman because we serve a God that sometimes what he does is he blesses us out of order. Yo, Jacob, come testify for us and tell us of your testimony. Yeah, Jacob, we know the story of Jacob. The Bible says that he was the younger son of his older brother Esau. He was not supposed to get the birthright. He wasn't supposed to get the blessing. But because we serve a God that sometimes grants us blessings out of order, Jacob was able to get the blessing blessing that should have been given to his brother Esau. Meg, David, would you come and testify? Bible says that when the prophet Samuel goes to anoint the next king of Israel, the Bible says that they look and there's all his brothers. He's the youngest brother and he goes down the line and he thinks that one of his brothers are the ones that should qualify to be king. They got the look to be king. They got the swagger to be king. They got the, they got the language to be king. But God God tells the prophet Samuel, you're looking on the outward, but I'm looking at the heart. And so that young runt David, God blesses him out of order. He leapfrogs over all of his brothers, and he becomes the king of Israel. Is there anybody thankful that God switched some stuff out of order in your life? that you were not supposed to get the promotion, but because of the favor of God, God ushered you up front where everybody else was supposed to be. Is there anybody thankful that God financially for some of us, he moved you up to the front. You were not even supposed to be where you're at right now, but God blessed you and granted you favor out of order so that you could get to the place you get. I know I got some students in the house where, man, you were wondering, man, I, sh- I needed to pass this class. Man, you were, you were kind of trailing behind, but God gave you favor out of order. And somehow, some way, you were able to pass and excel because of the favor of God. I'm so thankful that we serve a God that his favor of his presence is not dictated by protocol. So Mary, she is the favor of his presence. 
even though it's out of protocol. Second thing that we learn from the text is this, that the favor of his presence is not impacted by my disappointments. Verse 12 says this, after these things, he appeared in another form to two of them, and as they were walking into the country, and they went back and told the rest, but they did not believe them. Here are the disciples, there two of the disciples, they're walking back from Jerusalem where Jesus has just been killed. And the Bible tells us that they're at a space, they're in a headspace where they're so disappointed with God, where they are so disappointed at the promises that God has given them that they're now walking away from the last place that they saw God and they're walking away to go back home. Bible says this in the book of Luke, commenting about this same passage of Scripture, that they said to Jesus as he joins them, man, we had hoped that this was going to happen. We had hoped that this was going to take place. And is there anybody here that could just acknowledge that we've all had dreams that have been dashed? There have been hopes, there have been promises that God has given where we thought that God was going to do one thing, but he didn't do it. And, and so those hopes were, were dashed. Maybe you're in a midlife crisis right now where you thought you'd be further than you would be right now, where you thought you'd be further financially, where you thought your kids would be acting a certain way, where you envisioned a turning point in your life that just simply has not happened. Maybe you're in a space right now where you're on a second marriage. You're like, yo, this marriage has got to work. And you are just believing God from that. But now you're disappointed because things are getting a little rough. They're getting a little shaky. And what I love about Jesus is although they're dealing with disappointment, that does not prevent Jesus from granting the favor of his presence while they're on the road away from him. Is there anybody thankful that even when I'm struggling to hold on to God, that he still joins me on the road while I'm struggling with disappointment? You know, I'll never forget, and for those of you that are members who you know this, but man, I, one of those disappointment places for me was with our oldest son, AJ, when he was born. We were praying. We're asking God to do exceedingly abundantly above all we could ask or think. I remember it was a praise, praise team um, set. My wife was singing. She said, Fonz, I think something is going on. I said, okay, what's up? And she said, I think we need to go to the hospital. We get there, and the doctors let us know that she's in labor. It's way before the time for her to have our first, our oldest son. She's there, and we're praying. We're believing God. He says her, his lungs are not fully developed. Dude, this is not a good situation. We're praying. We're believing God. He comes anyway. We're in the NICU with him in Birmingham Hospital for the next two and a half months. And I, if, I'm, if I could confess and be honest with you, in those two and a half months, I struggled with disappointment. Why would God do what he did? Why would God not just hold back the birth so that he could come and not have to struggle in the NICU so that he could come and not have to deal with the challenges that he was going to have to deal with. Why, why would God do that? Why would he not allow him just to stay into my, in my wife's room? We were struggling with that, that disappointment. But I want you to know that God was faithful, that every step of the way during that journey, the Lord was present. He would have people come and share an encouraging word. And I need y'all to know how powerful hospital visitation is and calling people and sharing a word of encouragement when somebody's down. I need you to know that God will use you in the moment that you cannot even imagine to speak a word in due season to encourage somebody. And so don't ignore that voice. Don't ignore the prompting of the Spirit when he tells you to pick up the phone and call a family member, where he tells you to pick up the phone and call a senior, where he tells you to pick up the phone and call a friend. God may be using you in that moment to speak a word of encouragement. And so the Lord's presence was with us for those two and a half months. And for those of you in the church, y'all know this, but for those that are just visiting here today, man, I, I was wondering that thing. I was dealing with that disappointment. And I'll never forget that one day while we were in the NICU, 
the doctor came and said to my wife and I, it's a good thing your son was born when he was born. I said, no, that sounds crazy because his lungs weren't fully developed. That, that sounds crazy. It, it seems like it would have been better if he had stayed in my wife's womb a little bit longer. But I'll never forget what that doctor said. She said that if he had not been born when he was born, that they would not have been able to catch his condition and he would have probably died in your wife's womb. And so we serve a God that there are times when we are praying for one thing and God knows we don't know what we're talking about and so he circumvents that thing and so you may be dealing with disappointment right now but I need you to know that there's a God that sits up high and looks down low that he's factoring and working things out in a way that you cannot imagine or think. And so while we may not understand it right now, we'll understand it better by and by. And so I don't care what your disappointments have been. The good news is that Jesus grants us the favor of his presence even on the road. Last point right here. The third thing that I believe the text teaches us is this. We learn that the favor of his presence is not impacted by our need for demonstration. Verse 14 says this, Afterward, he appeared to the eleven themselves as they were reclining at the table, and he rebuked them for their unbelief and hardness of heart because they had not believed those who saw him after he had risen. I said, okay, Lord, why, why didn't you come to the disciples first? Like, why, 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 why didn't you do that? Like, I mean, these are your boys, right? These are his boys, right? Yeah, why, why, Lord, why didn't you come to the disciples first? Why'd you come to Mary first? Why'd you come to these other guys in the road to Emmaus first? One of the things when you read through the book of Mark that you see over and over again is this word immediately. Somebody say immediately. And so in the ministry of Jesus, it would say immediately or suddenly. So while he was doing his ministry works, it would say immediately this happened or suddenly this happened or immediately this happened. But when we look here, it's after the resurrection. They've waited three days. That thing did not happen immediately. And so I'm just like, Lord, well, why in the world didn't you come to them first? Why did you make them wait? Why did you make them rely on the word as opposed to demonstration? And what I realized is that the disciples may have become addicted to having to see demonstration rather than just being able to roll on the word. And so, yeah, we've seen Jesus open the eyes of the blind. Yes, we've seen him heal the sick. We've seen him demonstrate. But now I got to move the disciples to a different maturity level where they're no longer dependent on demonstration alone. And what I'm realizing, brothers and sisters, as we are living in this age of earth's history is that God is trying to wean the body of Christ off of the need for constant demonstration versus just being able to rely and stand on the word. We live in an American church where if it wasn't hidden that week, if the music didn't just happen a certain way, if we didn't have a certain feeling or experience, then we move back from being a part of the church. But could it be that God is trying to move the body of Christ to a place where we don't rely on demonstration, but we're more committed to devotion? where it doesn't matter whether or not I saw demonstration in that particular week that I got a feeling or that I had a spiritual high, but the mere fact that because I love Jesus, because I'm committed to the Lord, because I'm committed to his bride, the church, 
that it's, it does not matter whether I see demonstration all the time. What God is trying to pull from me is for me to be devoted. And that does not require demonstration. And so what I love about Jesus is though, although he was ministering and these were his boys, you would have thought that they would have moved past this, that they would have grown past it, but they were still addicted to demonstration, the need for it, that God says, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to help mature them, I'm going to help elevate them. But why God is so good is even when we're addicted to demonstration and we're not really devoted to him, we're addicted to the acts, we're addicted to the miracles, we're addicted to the gifts, we're addicted to the blessings, but we're not addicted to him minus those things. He still shows up. He shows up with a word of rebuke. He shows up with a word of love because right after that, right after Jesus rebukes them, after he shows up and rebukes them, the Bible says that he says, okay, I, 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 yeah, yep, you guys are addicted to, to demonstration. Yep, you guys got to see. You can't just take the word of Mary Magdalene. You can't just take the word of the God's on the way. You can't just be on the word. You got to see something. I see that you're a little immature, but I'm going to try to mature you. But then right after that, he says, go into all the world and preach the gospel throughout the world. So God is so good that he still shows up and he still entrusts them with responsibility, letting them know that, yes, you're ineligible. Yes, you got some reoccurring issues. Yes, you may be dealing with some disappointments. But with all of your issues, with all of your stuff, I still believe in you. And I'm just so thankful that we serve a God, y'all, that loves us, that cares for us, that believes in us in spite of all of our ineligibilities for being called to do for. I'm thankful that his favor is not based on my perfection. His favor is not based on my perfect performance. But I'm thankful that we serve a God that in spite of me is still willing to favor me with his presence. How many know we serve a good God? How many know that in spite of the many reoccurring issues you've been dealing with this year, he's still with you. He's still showing up. In spite of the areas where you're struggling to still believe in him, He's still showing up. In spite of the fact that we, as American Christians, we are addicted to demonstration and not devotion, he's still showing up. We serve a good God. I remember my, um, my mom, she, as you all know, she died from cancer. But I remember this one stretch. She, um was a faith-filled woman. And I remember she um, would tell me, son, the Lord is going to heal me of this thing. Dude, my mom, she, I mean, there was no doubt God was going to heal her of this cancer. And so she would talk to me, and she's like, Lord, man, Lord, Lord's going to do it. Lord's going to do it. And every year, something would happen. She was a fighter, so she would fight. And for those of you that have had family members that have battled cancer, you'll resonate with this. She would battle, and then she would have a setback. And then when she would battle back, she never was at the point that she had started out at. So she was going back and forth with that. And I could tell that there was a point at which she was disappointed. Because she just knew the Lord was going to heal her. She had the faith. She knew God was able. She had seen God do it for others. I mean, 
She was telling me, man, like, dude, the, the Lord is able. He can do it. I've seen him do it for others. He can do it for me. And I remember she went through that period of disappointment. But the thing that's so amazing about God, and I just honor him today, is that even in that space, she was still walking with the Lord. She was still wrestling with God. And I remember the moment that she came to a place of peace because Jesus was still walking with her on the road. And she called me and she told me, and I knew in the tone of her voice that she was, she was dying. And she told me, she said, son, I love you. Look after your sister. She said, tell your father we're good. I mean, she went down a list of stuff, and I knew when she shared all of those things, I was like, oh, dang it. And my aunt told me, yo, you got to get down here. But I'm sharing that because even in the midst of that deep disappointment for her, God was still with her on the road. He was still walking with her. And I just need somebody here to know today, in all of those areas, he's still walking with you too. Our praise team is going to share uh, just a, a word and song, and then we're going to close with an appeal. God bless you.
is at rest there is freedom you can be free from bondage and healed from brokenness and full of joy be free where the spirit of the lord our god is at rest there is freedom you can be free the church fam if you would just stand with me just as we get ready to close today's service anybody want to just thank God for the freedom that is available in Jesus Christ and I just need you to know today that wherever you may fall in any of these categories whether it's the reoccurring issue whether it's you're struggling with the disappointment or whether you're just bound by just the need to always have God demonstrate and not just be able to rest on his word. The reality is for all of us, he still shows up. He's still on the road with us. He's still appearing. And I'm just thankful that his favor is for the ineligible. The folk that are not even supposed to get it. That's who his favor is for. And so I don't know who you are today. I don't know what maybe category you fall in. But I, I, I need you to know that wherever you feel that distance from God, he's actually right there with you. He's right there with you. And he wants to bring you to a place where we, even with the disciples, where you'll be able to walk in freedom. For the Bible says that he who the Son sets free is free indeed and can we be honest from some of us even in the body of Christ we know that text but we're not experiencing that freedom we hear it like yo he who the son says free is free indeed but I'm still in bondage to some stuff I'm still got those reoccurring things and God is saying I'm trying to move you to that place but I need you to trust me I need you to know that I'm with you and so for that person here today that just is like, yo, pastor, I just, I just want to just in this moment, I want to take a deck, I want to take a stand of deck, declaring that I can have freedom in Jesus. 
that no matter my disappointments, no matter my discouragements, wherever I've been at right now with God, that I'm just trusting him in the journey, that he's still on the road with me. Yes, I've been disappointed by some stuff. Yes, I've been discouraged by some stuff. Yes, I've been unbinded to some things. But I'm, I'm reaffirming today that I can be free in him. And so if that's you today, you're just saying, yo, pastor, I just want to take a step where I'm just saying, I'm, I'm renewing my faith and trust in God that he can set me free. I want to ask you just to slip out of your seat, wherever your neighbor is, just tell your neighbor, excuse me, we want to just pray for you today. As we are just celebrating Resurrection Weekend, we're celebrating an amazing God. Tell your neighbor, excuse me, come to the floor. We want to pray for you today, wherever you're at in the building. Wherever you're at in the building. Church is praying right now. Wherever you're at, Lord, I just want, I want, I want to be free, God. I want to be free, Lord. I want to be free. I want to be free. Sit out of your seat. Tell your neighbor, excuse me. Go ahead and make your way to the front. We want to pray for you today. He's with you on the journey. He's with you on the journey. He's not left you nor forsaken. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. He's still showing up. He's still showing up. God, I was doing this last night. He's still showing up. Lord, I'm angry with you about some stuff. He's still showing up. Father, I'm mad at you for my marriage breaking apart. He's still showing up. He's still showing up. He's still appearing. And what I love is that when, when, when the favor and that blessing comes, it's going to be out of order. God going to do some stuff for us that is just, this whole, this was out of order. This was phase two. God said, no, nah, I'm a God of out of order, out of protocol. I'm going to move it up so that the people of God can see that the same God that could do that can do that in your life too. He can do that for you. He's still showing up. I want to invite the church family, if you would. We just want to pray for those that have come forward. Just want to pray a prayer of deliverance, a prayer of freedom. Let's pray together. Just send your hand in a direction to the front, if you would, just in, as a show of unity. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, we come before you, first thanking you, God, for just your life, your death, your resurrection. I want to thank you, God, that you are a God, that you, you, you favor you're on the side of the ineligible. I want to thank you, God, because all of us in this room fall in that category. For the Bible declares that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So right now, God, I just thank you, Lord, for still showing up in our lives. I want to pray for those that have come forward right now. God, we're praying and asking God for just, we are reaffirming our belief that we can be free. We are reaffirming the belief that, Lord, yes, we can be free indeed. God, we want to thank you for showing up even when we stumble back. We want to thank you for showing up as we continue to deal with d disappointment and discouragements. We want to thank you for showing up when we are out of order, when we are immature in our faith. We want to thank you for your patience with us on the journey, for not, for, for not, not, not giving up on us, God, but continuing to walk with us every step of the way. And so, God, I'm praying, God, for each individual here today that, Lord, you would just do something amazing. And I want to thank you for still entrusting us with responsibility. And so I pray, God, that someone here today would leave encouraged that they would leave with the knowledge that our Lord, our Savior, he's still showing up. So we honor you today, God. We exalt you. We magnify you. You are great and greatly to be praised. 
We thank you in the name of Jesus. Amen. And the church said amen. We're going to ask for you just to hang back for just one moment. Pastor Nisi has a brief presentation, and, and then we're going to have Elder Williams come forward to give our benediction. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Woo! I don't know about y'all, but I'm free. I'm free to be. I'm free to love. I'm free. If you, if you, if you haven't noticed that, Bobby, I'm free. I operate in my freedom. I don't take that for granted. That's why I will not be bound down by anyone. But Jesus set me free. Amen. Hallelujah. Pastors, would you please join me up here? Thank you. I appreciate you. As we are rounding up uh, this Women's Month, there's a lot of people that we really want to celebrate. We never really have enough time, but we're making the time because it matters. These are people who go, they work behind the scenes, they go above and beyond, and they don't ask for nothing they just show up and if it needs to get done they get it done I love those kind of people I want to multiply those people and I am praying that y'all will all become those people where you show up and you just get it done amen hallelujah in Jesus name at this time I would like to ask to come up and join us sister Regina Thomas Reggie if you would come up please I'd appreciate that uh, sister Birdie Sister Birdie, if you, are, if you are in here, would you please come up? Someone find Sister Birdie. She's probably already working. Bring her up here. Uh, Sister Viola Davis, if you are here, please come up. Please join us up here. Yes, you. Yes, you. Uh, my sister Haley, Haley Crawford, uh, uh, where are you? Come up here. Come up here. Come up here. Uh, Sister Janine Adams, would you please come and join us up here? Okay. And if Sister Mary Green is here, would you please join us on here? Come, 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 come. Thank you. As we were thinking about who we wanted to celebrate, it's like, okay, we don't have enough to do it all on the same day. But what we do want to say is, right here are these amazing women. Um, the, uh, Sister Mary Green, uh, <laughs> the wife of a senior pastor, she loans us her husband um, <laughs> and prays that we will treat him well. And so far, I pray that we are. But what an amazing ability to sit back and allow us to have this great man of God to lead us. It's not for the faint of heart. I know many people have complaints and whatever, but it is not for the faint of heart to be married to a pastor. It is not. And then to have children, too. And then to have a life, to have a career. It is not for the faint of heart. Same thing with Sister Janine. To let, she just got here. And by God, he rolled up his sleeve, and she's in children's ministry. Praise God for you. And then Haley, my sister, baby on the hip. That don't stop her nothing. She gets it done. And I want to just thank you, ladies, for being these amazing women. Because as a part of the team, I'm the only lady on the team. And so I really, really give them a hard time. Um, and I confess. Uh, but I do want to thank you. Reggie, steadfast, unmovable always at her post teaching teaching the words of God oh what what listen if you haven't sat in her class she teaches Sabbath school she is devoted she knows the word if you're looking to study and right here Reggie and then Viola um, when I asked I said we want where's sister Birdie did anybody find sister Birdie She's probably in the, um, in the room in the, doing the food bank. I ask somebody, I'm not going to tell them who, somebody that goes above and beyond, and they said Viola Davis. She shows up on Friday. It doesn't matter. She gets the food ready. And then she shows up again on Saturday. It's supposed to be two separate teams. She shows up again on Saturday to make sure that the food bank, she's helping out with the food bank. So when you guys run out to get the food, Make sure you think the people that are serving because they are doing it out of the goodness of their heart. So if the pastors would help me pass these out, I would greatly appreciate it.
I love flowers, if anybody doesn't know that, I love flowers. And I love orchids, and so I got to pick these up with my assistant, Dashay. Is Dashay in the room? I want you to get up, because you've been a great assistant, and people should know who actually helps me get stuff done most times when I need to run around. She's my extra hands and feet, praise the Lord. Thank you so much, ladies. And we will present the, um, to Sister Betty when we find her. Thank you so much, ladies. We love you. We appreciate you. You are awesome. Keep doing what you're doing. And you know what? Like I say every time, your reward really, truly is in heaven because we could never repay you. Bless you. Amen. Can we just affirm these mighty women of God? Amen. Just want to remind you as we get ready to do our benediction that tonight at 7 p.m., the upper room right here, we're excited, uh, especially with the, the new media upgrades. So it's going to be a whole new experience. Uh, but, um, man, we, uh, we're looking forward to continuing to praise God uh, for this resurrection weekend. So at this time, Elder Williams will share with us our benediction. And just one quick th a note to Mary Am. She finished that painting, my Lord. Wow. Wow. I, I just, wow. Okay, I'm not going to say wow again. All right. I'm so glad that Jesus did not stay in the tomb. Because he lived, we can face tomorrow. Let us uh, pray. God, of love, or creator, Jesus, his grace, our savior, and the Holy Spirit who's present with us and guide us be with us all till we see him face to face. I pray in Jesus' name, amen.
cast down our crowns and humble ourselves. We bow down just to honor you. We cast down our crowns, humble ourselves. We bow down just to honor you. We cast down our crowns. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, clap your hands, everybody, like this. Oh. 